What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Sony has just announced their latest full frame offering in the A7 lineup with the A7C. So C like because you see through the camera things to take pictures of? What? N no, that doesn't. Oh, so like C, like it's a nautical kind of underwater camera? That's literally dumber than your last suggestion. It's not even close. Oh, like the letter C for compact. C for compact, like Sony's smallest full frame camera ever. Is it close? Yes, it's because it's C for compact. Anyways, I'm gonna pretend that the C stands for compact because it is in fact their smallest full frame camera yet. And they claim it's the smallest full frame camera with in-body stabilization ever. All right, so let's take a look at some of the highlights of this camera. I'm not going to go through every spec, but I'll touch on several of them and talk about them in relation to the Sony a7 III, which I've actually got right here. So without a doubt, the size is gonna be the biggest change here from previous a7 cameras. They claim that it's 20% smaller than their existing full frame lineup. Compared to the a7 III, it's the exact same width, a full inch shorter and nearly a half inch shallower. In fact, it's barely bigger than an A6600. So I'm not sure what that says for ergonomics, but some people are kind of worried about it. It will be quite interesting to get one in the hand and see how it feels. As far as weight goes, it's identical to the A6000 series cameras, nearly half a pound lighter than the A7 III. When you look at this camera, your first impression is that it's an A6000 series camera that just recently got like a gym membership or something. It's just a little bit beefier. As far as the sensor goes, it seems to be identical to the a7 III in resolution, ISO capabilities, autofocus modes, as well as having the five stops of in-body stabilization. However, your shutter speed is limited one fourth a thousandth, whereas the a7 III is twice set at one eight thousandth which is particularly useful if you're using really fast lenses in bright situations. But other than that, this seems to be Sony's best effort to squeeze a full a7 III into an a6600 body. So the viewfinder is still on the camera. It's just tucked back down here like the a6000 series cameras. And it's the exact same 2.3 megapixel resolution of the a7 III. And it's even the same as the much older a6500 which many people think is too low, especially given that this is a brand new camera. But for reference, Sony's A9 and A7R3 and the Canon EOS R and Nikon Z6 all have 3.7 megapixel electronic viewfinders and the A7R4 has double the resolution with a whopping 5.8 megapixel viewfinder. The battery is Sony's new Z battery, which is in a lot of the new cameras, and it's good for 740 pictures or 225 minutes of video recording. And that's continuous. Yes, there is no video recording limit on this camera, which is one of the reasons that I think this camera is targeted towards the video crowd, but not the pros, and we'll touch on that later. So we have finally made it to what Sony users have been begging for for ages, was a fully articulating LCD monitor on a full frame camera. This is gonna be great for getting both high and low angle photos in both portrait and landscape orientation. So hopefully this sticks around for many of their future cameras. It's touchscreen, but only for focus, like all of Sony touchscreens so far. But while all that hardware addition is nice, we've lost a few things too. First of all, there is no front control wheel. This wheel right here is gone. So if you wanna have control over more than two camera options at once, you're out of luck. You'll have to use the back wheel here or click around to find the setting and then control it with your single wheel at the top. I don't like this at all. I use the front and rear wheels all the time on the a7 III here, but I think this camera isn't for the kind of person that's gonna be using all those controls. Next, they removed the programmable buttons. On the a7 III, there are four of them. And now they're none. They couldn't have just given us one? Just, just one, that's all I want. Anyways, I typically use the programmable buttons for like white balance or zoom in for focus check or manual focus toggling back and forth, autofocus, manual focus. But with this camera, you need to go into the menu to change those settings, which isn't the worst thing with the function menu that Sony has, but it's still a little bit of a hassle. They also removed the joystick, so you need to use the touchscreen to change focus points which bothers me because whenever I put my eye up to this, my nose touches somewhere on the screen and uh, changes my focus point, especially on the A6500. Not as bad on this one. So I just end up turning the touchscreen completely off. So there's lots of fingertip functionality that's been removed, which kind of alienates a lot of the power users. So that begs the question, who's the camera for? Well, if you want my opinion, whatever that's worth, I think they're targeting the vlogging community that is looking for full frame options. And it would be a good camera for that. Let me explain. 
Most vloggers want to set the video to auto and not have to worry about messing with too many settings. That's why all the buttons are gone. Vloggers like to see themselves in the frame of the shot, hence the articulating screen. Vloggers need audio. This has an audio jack and a hot shoe mount for mounting your mic. And that's all you need. It's also got audio out for those that have dedicated camera operators that want to monitor the audio. Vloggers aren't going to be using the EVF at all, hence the low-res viewfinder. Vloggers don't need 10-bit video. This only shoots 8-bit 420, just like the a7 III. So again, that doesn't cater to the pros. It's only got one card slot. Vlogging typically isn't critical, one-in-a-lifetime type of content, so vloggers aren't about worried about shooting backup video on a second card. They want something lightweight, compact, and this camera hits all those points while bringing a full-frame sensor into play. And combined with the new Sony 28-60mm to 60 millimeter that they just announced, I think that that kit would be very, a very capable, compact, full-frame vlogging setup, which seems completely unnecessary. But I think that's what it is. So that's what I think. There are, I think there's just too many pro level features that have been nixed in favor of set and forget kind of ergonomics and controls, which is fine, except that the price is way up there for losing all those features. Sure, the image quality and autofocus is outstanding. If it matches this, I mean, I'm sure it will, but it's only $200 less than the a7 III, which means it's still $400 more than the Nikon Z5 and 800 bucks more than the Canon EOS RP. And both of those cameras are in direct competition with the a7C. So it'll be interesting to see who springs for this camera and who gets the most use out of it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments and what you would use a camera like the a7C for if you had it. So thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing and have a great day. See ya.